The Dallas Stars picked up a massive win and got two points on Saturday afternoon against the Vegas Golden Knights. And on today's episode, we'll talk about how they got that win and why it's so important. And then we'll look ahead to tonight's matchup as the Stars head to Detroit for a game against the Red Wings. All of this and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bing bong. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Monday, April 10th. And today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NHL60 and use code NHL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast at. We're free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. Hope you guys had a fantastic Easter weekend. Hopefully got to spend some time with family and friends. And now we're back to it this week, the final week of the NHL regular season. The Stars will be playing their last three games tonight, Wednesday, and Thursday. But we have to go back and talk about Saturday's win at home against the Vegas Golden Knights. Really the final big test for the Stars team in the regular season in terms of, of a quality opponent that will be in the postseason and be looking to make a deep run in the postseason. Of course, the remaining teams on Dallas's schedule are Detroit, and St. Louis, two teams that are currently sitting on the outside of the playoff picture. But Vegas, uh, heading into this game against Dallas, was leading the Pacific Division and is still looking to run away with the Pacific Division crown as well as the Western Conference crown. And so we know uh, that this was a very good and not easily beatable VGK team despite some of the injuries uh, and missing players that they had vacant from their roster on Saturday. And of course, we all know that Dallas and Vegas have a history of always playing tight and competitive games. And Saturday's matchup in Dallas was the most recent installment in the series. It felt like a playoff game where both goalies were really playing excellent. Both teams were not making too many mistakes. And, uh, you know, the, the offense was a little hard to come by for two teams that are typically pretty good at offense this season. But both goaltenders, Jake Ottinger, Jonathan Quick not really giving an inch in their crease, and both teams got their only goals from their bottom six, really from their fourth line. Uh, and pretty crazy to see the Stars find themselves in a game like that. But I mean, sometimes that's just how these games shake out, where both goalies are playing pretty well. Neither team is really applying a ton of pressure. There was only what, like 55 total shots between these two teams during this game. Uh, pretty low scoring and, and pretty even just low shot totals from really what we're used to seeing from the Stars, especially as of late. I feel like they've gotten into some pretty high-intensity offensive matchups, but they only get two goals from both teams in this matchup. Brett Howden scoring in the first period for the VGK, his sixth of the season, and Yoel Kiviranta scoring his eighth of the season in the second period off of a really slick Pass passing sequence, if you will, from Thomas Harley and Roddick Foxa. Harley picks up his first point of the season, really all the way from the Dallas Stars defensive zone. He sends the puck through the neutral zone. Foxa just deflects it off his stick and hits Kivi Ranta in stride, and then Kivi takes care of the rest. It's plays like that that make me want to see Thomas Harley stick around for the long term and for the remainder of this season, hopefully even in the playoffs. Uh, I think that he's earned that. And obviously this coaching staff has put a lot of faith in Thomas Harley, even in this brief NHL stint. And he even got some minutes in overtime during the three on three before the game eventually went to a shootout where the Dallas stars were eventually victorious. But again, Thomas Harley uh, has now played, you know what, two, three games so far with this team. And 
He's looked very, very good in all of his outings so far with the Dallas sweater on. And this was overall a game that even though it was low scoring, maybe didn't feel like a lot happened. It was important for the Stars to get this win. The team played up to the moment, secured two big points in a game that, again, had that postseason feel. The fans were really into the game. Uh, everyone was just kind of on edge, especially in that third period and in overtime. A lot of posts getting hit late in the game. I mean, both teams just inches away with some of their shots from potentially ending the game either in regulation or in overtime. But that again, that's just the way that hockey works. And it's nice to see the Stars winning these meaningful, intense games here down the stretch because, again, that just adds to them getting into the right frame of mind heading into the postseason. I know you guys are hearing this on Sunday night and or Monday morning, afternoon, but I'm recording this on Saturday evening. The Minnesota and Colorado games from Saturday actually haven't gone final yet. Minnesota actually just took a 4-1 to lead over St. Louis with 10 seconds left in the middle frame, so I expect that score to hold. And the Colorado Avalanche and the Los Angeles Kings uh, won't start for another hour or so at the time of recording this. So obviously by the time you guys are hearing this, we know how those games shaped out. But really, I mean, it matters. But at the end of the day, you don't have to watch as intently because the Dallas Stars did their part. That's really all you can ask this team to do here with these final games on their schedule is win the games that are in front of them and, and you know leave the rest up to fate, if you will. I mean, the Stars can't control what the Wild and the Avalanche do with their remaining schedule, they can only, you know, handle what they can control. And right now that's the Red Wings and the St. Louis Blues for their final three games of the season. It's obviously easier said than done to win those games. It's not just going to be a given that the Stars are victorious in these next three matchups, but I really don't see a reason why the Stars can't win out. I think they're they're better than both of these teams. They've already beaten both of these upcoming teams once this season. And the team is really starting to hit a nice stride for the most part. Jake Ottinger's looked very sharp. And of course, even with a lack of scoring on Saturday's game, I think there's still a ton to like uh, from the Stars offense. The top line, Mason Marchment, will maybe be coming back this week. The coaching staff is optimistic that he'll make a return and get to play in at least one game before the postseason. So we'll be getting a top six forward back. And then, of course, uh, you add in the mix of Wyatt Johnston, Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, and even defensively Miro Haskinen and the aforementioned Thomas Harley making big plays from the blue line. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about Jake Ottinger and his heroics on Saturday, especially in the shootout. He was a big key for the Stars getting the win on Saturday afternoon. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. I want to thank you again for making the Locked On Stars podcast your first listen every single day. I hope you guys are off to a great start this week, the final week of the NHL regular season. The playoffs are just around the corner, and there is one player in particular that the Stars need to be excellent in the postseason, and he is getting ready for another stellar playoff outing, and that is, of course, Stars goaltender Jake Ottinger. Saturday gave us another excellent Ottinger outing. Plays great historically against the Vegas Golden Knights, especially over the past couple of seasons. He's been very, very good against this Golden Knights team, especially in the shootout. I think even if you look back at last season, we know that the Stars and the Knights played an intense game that went to a shootout at the AAC at the end of last season as both teams were very much fighting for a spot in the playoffs. And Jake Ottinger saves plenty in the shootout in that one and then goes three for three in the shootout on Saturday afternoon and also saved 19 of 20 shots in the regulation period. Uh, and really, after that first goal from Brett Howden was very much lights out and, of course, did get some favorable uh, shots as well, if you will, some that found the post or the crossbar although the Stars were doing that on the other end as well. So both Jake Ottinger 
and Jonathan Quick, the beneficiaries uh, of some almost but not quite accurate enough shots. And, I mean, you look at those numbers, 19 for 20, I think that's another added bonus to this game that Jake Ottinger only had to face 20 shots, which, again, you look at some of the inactives for this Vegas team. They were without Jack Eichel, Shea Theodore, uh, and, you know, even guys like William Carrier. Uh, and, you know, they they still had, of course, some really good pieces out there. Phil Kessel, uh, Barbashev, Marcia Sol, guys that can do damage, but, the Stars, again, only had to face 20 shots. And uh, again, Jake did play this full game and had to play some overtime and the shootout as well. So it wasn't necessarily a restful outing for Jake Ottinger, but certainly not the most intense outing, which again is great for his longevity. Uh, and here down the final stretch of the season, where I imagine he's going to get two of the next three starts over the next three games or the final games of the regular season, you need him to be as fresh as possible heading into the playoffs. And only having to face 20 shots against a really good Vegas team, I think, is helpful. And like I said, he came in huge in the shootout, allowing the Stars to pick up the win. That last save in particular against Paul Cotter was particularly delightful. Looked like Paul Cotter had Jake Gottinger beat, but he sticks out his right leg and ba basically just by his toenail keeps that puck from going into the back of the net and giving the Stars the win. He stayed with the play. I mean, most most goalies in the NHL probably don't make that play. There's probably a small handful that have the reflexes to kick out their leg like that. Uh, and thankfully, Paul Carter did not elevate that puck, although he probably thought he had Ottinger beat, and there was no need to elevate, uh, but it never really is over <laughs> until Jake Ottinger says it's over. He tends to have the final word in plays like that one, but he's been putting together some really great outings as of late has Jake Ottinger, and you can see him starting to shift into playoff mode. Since April 8th, he's a 904 save percentage, a 264 goals against average. You might be saying, well, those aren't the most impressive numbers. There's guys in the league that have better numbers over that stretch of time, and you'd be right, but there's another important stat that I didn't read, and that is nine wins. Over the past month or so, Jake Ottinger has gone 9-2-1, and one. And I know people say, well, wins aren't necessarily the greatest stat in terms of goalies. While I can agree at times, I think that that's a great number for the team. Well, the Stars, as we know, kind of had a little bit of a rough outing through the month of February and even bleeding a little bit uh, into the month of March at times. Things were not always great. But down the stretch here, Jake Ottinger has been fantastic. Nothing short of excellent for this team. And sometimes the stars are able to get those explosive offensive outings and they're able to do the heavy lifting for the team. But there's been a few games and I think Saturdays against Vegas was one of them where they've kind of needed Jake Ottinger to be an, an, you know, extra good or to take that extra step in order to raise the bar because the offense just won't be able to get much going. And that's kind of how it was for both teams. They do get that one goal in the second period. But other than that, not really a lot working in favor for the Stars offensively, but thankfully they had Jake Ottinger to lean on, and especially in a game like that that felt like a playoff game, had playoff implications. You needed him to be great, and the Stars have needed him to be great over the past month, and he has been just that. The win is an important stat because even if Jake isn't putting up the best numbers across the board in terms of saves and save percentages, he always seems to do enough to help push the Stars past the finish line. I've said it time and time again that he has been their rock this season, and he is going to have to continue to do that, although I don't expect every game from here on out to be a 2-1 shootout win. I expect the offense to chip in a little more, especially this week, but even once we get to the playoffs, I think that the offense will find a way to raise its game and help match that same intensity that Jake Ottinger is putting out night in and night out, and, and this team, if they get that mixture, is going to be incredibly tough to stop and incredibly tough to be in a best of seven series. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, but when we come back, we'll look ahead to tonight's matchup. The Dallas stars are in Detroit for their final meeting of the season with the Red Wings. All right, everybody, we are back. Final segment of today's episode of locked on stars and the team is back on the road for the final time in the regular season for Two games in the Midwest, or yeah, Detroit. Detroit's in the Midwest. Sure, we'll uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, I don't really know where the Midwest ends and where it begins, but nonetheless, the team heads out to where the Road Whites for the final time in the regular season. They'll be in Detroit this evening, and then they will head to St. Louis, uh, and then head back to Dallas for a second game in a row with the Blues. And Dallas 
will be in Detroit for the home finale for the Red Wings. The Red Wings have been one of those weird teams in the East where you might look at them and say, oh, they're seventh in the division. They're out of the playoff picture, so they're a bad team. And, and they certainly aren't a great team, but they're one of those just kind of weird stuck in the middle teams that they're not awful, but the Eastern Conference is just so stacked that even kind of the mediocre, like decent teams tend to fall by the wayside and can tend to look like worse off teams and i think that they are better than their record might appear but they do find themselves on the outside looking in of the postseason and they've kind of just hit way too many speed bumps this season and they're currently in the middle of a two game losing skid with only three games remaining on the schedule one at home and then they will head out uh, on the road for their last couple of games of the season but the Stars have been a great team on the road, especially in the second half of the 22-23 campaign. And they'll definitely need to be sharp tonight because, as I mentioned, if you're looking at the teams that are not going to the Stanley Cup playoffs, I would argue that Detroit is one of the better teams in that category. That They're just a team that has some really good pieces and has some really good nights offensively, but the defense and the goaltending just has not been able to offer up enough night in and night out uh, in order to help get this team wins. And then even sometimes when they do get that defense or goaltending, the offense hasn't been able to get things going. They have a negative 26 goal differential a team that has so much potential with a few players, guys like Dylan Larkin. And um, we know that they were sellers at the deadline. Guys like Jacob Verana, Tyler Bertuzzi have moved on to different teams. And I think that there's still optimism for the future. The Red Wings just still sorting some things out, but a team that you can't overlook. You you might it's easy to say, and I, I find myself guilty of this all the time, not just in hockey, but even in other sports, saying, Well, this is a bad team. They they find themselves out of the playoffs. It's the end of the season. And so uh, this should be an easy win. And, and I do agree with that. I think it should be easy. Uh, but I know that it probably won't be because the Red Wings, as I mentioned, are playing in their final home game. And I think they would be playing hard regardless, because, again, I don't really believe that any hockey players actually tank. I believe front offices and management of teams do, and they'd like to see their teams lose if it means getting a generational draft pick, a guy like Connor Bedard. But I think especially with it being the Red Wings final home outing, I think that they'll play even a little bit extra hard. They have a very diehard fan base up in Detroit, and I think that's going to add some spice to the evening. You have to imagine this Red Wings team. It's been a disappointing season, but you have to imagine they'd want to send their home crowd fans home happy one last time this season. But again, I think the Dallas Stars hold the advantage in most categories in this game. Offensively, defensively, Billy Husso and goal had a really strong start to the year, and then really at the second half of the season, after the All-Star break, things started to fall apart a little bit for the netminder. And, and I think Jake Ottinger probably gets the start. I imagine we could see Ottinger in this game, and then the games against the Blues are back-to-backs. And so I think we'll see Wedgwood either in St. Louis or we'll see him at home, and Jake Ottinger will play whatever game Scott Wedgwood does not play, uh, again, allowing Jake to get an, an adequate amount of rest, but also making sure he's staying active and being involved in these games we're still on the lookout for some big stats and fine and big points for the stars we're still looking for joe pavelski to get that one final point the one that he needs in order to reach the 1000 point milestone in his nhl career and of course also uh, looking for miro haskinen to surpass sergey zubov for the most most points scored in a single season by a dallas stars defenseman he still needs three to tie and four uh, in order to take that lead. Easier said than done with how many games are left in the season, but we know that Miro Haskinen is due at really any time in any given game uh, in order to have a three or four point evening. So be on the lookout for that. Hopefully both of those guys can get to those milestones by the end of the season. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We're always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find and follow us on social media at Dane double underscore Lewis is my personal Twitter account. And you can also search the show at Locked on Stars Twitter and Instagram. We're on both of those sites. And we'll, of course, be back here tomorrow giving you a recap of this game against the Red Wings, hopefully talking about another Dallas Stars win and another two points in the bank as this team is looking to win the Central Division 
and get home ice advantage for at least the first round of the postseason. But I hope you guys have a great Monday, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. 